Hello, hi, my name is Hannah and welcome to today's video. First of all, Happy New Year. I haven't talked to you all since December and quite a few things have happened since then. First and foremost, we started a new year. It is 2022, despite the fact that I am still currently living in 2019 and the past two years have just been unreal, I think, for most people. But apart from that, I also celebrated my birthday, my 25th birthday. I'm literally no longer in my early 20s. We finally entered the mid-20s and now I'm entering my late 20s. The age thing is really catching up to me. It's it's a lot, you know? I'm, I'm still trying to process it. And then, honestly, most significantly, to me at least, my reading journal came out. The A Clockwork Reader Reading Journal. The reading journal that I created it came out in December. Um, it's been out in the world for about a month now and the response has been incredible. Your reactions to it have been incredible. Um, seeing everybody like using the reading journal has honestly brought me to tears. I go on Instagram every day and just check the mentions and tags and like every day I see new people using it and it's honestly so overwhelming in the best way possible but I'm just so so happy and pleased that so many of you are loving the reading journal and it's exactly what I wanted for all of you to get out of it to be able to use this at the start of the new year and start filling it in and documenting all the books you read. Very grateful to all of you, to everyone who has been supporting the journal um, and I hope for your continued support and I hope you continue to love it. But yeah, 2021 has come to a close and with every year's end I always love to film my favorite books that I read in the previous year and talk about my favorite books of that year and this year, despite the fact that it is a bit delayed, I like to usually make this video right at the start of the year but it's here nonetheless. So today we're going to be talking about my favorite books that I read in 2021. I read a total of 26 books this year, which is more than I read last year, but less than I typically read. But I have not been putting pressure on myself to read very much in general. Also, had a lot of things going on last year. I was doing a lot of different projects and stuff, so it makes sense that I wasn't reading too, too much. However, I really did enjoy the majority of the books that I read last year, and I'm very excited to talk about my favorite ones and share them with you. I've talked about most of these already in different videos throughout the year and stuff, but um, this is my comprehensive list of of the best books I read in 2021 and ones that I would recommend to pretty much everyone. Usually I like to do a top 10 favorites, but honestly I didn't have 10, I only had 8. So um, we're just gonna go with it and this is in order of my least favorite to my favorite of the year. And uh, this year was exciting because I think I found a new like favorite book of all time, which I'm sure most of you can probably guess before we even get there. But without any further ado, let's get into my list of favorites. Alright, first up, the bottom two on this list are a little bit interchangeable, kind of just depends on my mood, but I love both of them nonetheless. Um, but the first one I have is Darius the Great is Not Okay. This is a book I read I think in the first half of the year and I've mentioned it in a video before, but I absolutely adored it. It's a YA contemporary that follows the story of this Iranian-American boy named Darius and he ends up traveling to Iran with his family for the first time and he gets to meet a whole side of his family that he's never met in person before. And it's about him and his identity with his culture, about his relationship with his family, and it's honestly just one of the best YA contemporaries I've ever read. As someone who is Persian and doesn't get to read about very many Persian characters in YA novels or in just fiction in general, this story really meant a lot to me. I felt very much seen. I felt like I could understand aspects of this story on a very deep level and it was honestly just really rewarding to read. I think it's a beautiful story for anyone to read honestly about identity and mental health and culture and family and relationships, which is what a lot of YA contemporary I think aims to do, to touch on those topics, but I think this one does a beautiful job at it. It's more of a quiet story in my opinion. It's not like super action-packed. It's not like there's a ton of drama or anything like that. It's very introspective, but I quite like that. And I think that's what made the story stand out to me a lot. And what made it really special was the fact that I could identify with so much of the cultural aspects that were mentioned in here. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. I gave this five out of five stars. I'd highly recommend it to anybody who's looking for a wonderful contemporary novel to read. It's so good and I definitely need to read the sequel. The next book on my list is one that I've mentioned in definitely a few videos throughout the year already, but that is The House in the Cerulean Sea. I loved this book. <laughs> this book is a little bit difficult to describe because it's kind of like fantastical, but it's not like a full-on fantasy. It follows the story of this caseworker named Linus Baker, and one day he's assigned to go to this orphanage for um, magical youth, basically. In this world, some people can be born as like magical creatures, like a gnome or a fairy or a werewolf, anything like that, and um, he's assigned to go to this one orphanage specifically because there are six children there that are deemed to be dangerous and so he's supposed to go there and investigate. I don't really know how to describe this story other than it really gives me series of unfortunate events vibes, um, but with like more magic 
and also overall better in my opinion. <laughs> it's funny and heartwarming and heartbreaking. It definitely made me tear up a little bit and I feel like it would make most people tear up a little bit and it's just such a beautiful story. It's really well written and it's very much the type of story that is transportative. So like when you were reading this, you feel like you are inside this story and you don't exist in the real world anymore, which is what I'm always looking for when I'm reading something that is fantasy or fantastical in any way. And this book definitely delivers on that front and I just highly, highly recommend it to anybody who wants a really heartwarming story about these magical children and this man who just wants to protect them and take care of them. It's so wholesome. It is so wholesome. Sad, but also wholesome and also ultimately happy. So yes, once again, if you haven't read it, I know I've talked about it many times, but highly, highly recommend reading this book. All right, and coming in at number six on my list of favorites is the finale in one of my favorite fantasy series, and that is, of course, The Sky Beyond the Storm by Sabah Tahir. I still can't believe the Ember in the Ashes series is over. This was literally the first book I read in 2021, so I read it like almost exactly a year ago in January last year. And sometimes I like still forget that I read it because in my mind like this series, it's not over. Like it can't be over. <laughs> I don't want it to end. Despite the fact that I've read the ending and I'm happy with it, it doesn't feel real. This was honestly one of the most satisfying conclusions to a series I think I've read in a very long time. It gave me a lot of angst, a lot of um, epic battle scenes, which you love in like a good epic fantasy, um, and lots of good romance, and a very, very satisfying ending for all of these characters that I deeply, deeply love. The series has been really special to me and it's been with me for years now and I have just so many fond memories of reading it. And I still think that it is one of the best YA fantasy series out there. Despite the fact that it is like a New York Times bestselling series, I still think that it deserves more hype and more attention than it gets. And I will like go to my grave with this. I just don't think enough people talk about this series in general in terms of YA fantasy. And I don't care, like I will keep repeating myself, like you should read An Ember in the Ashes read all of them. All four of them are so good. Some of the best characters in YA, some of the best romance in YA, some of the best writing in YA, in my opinion. I can't wait to read anything else Sabah Tahir writes. I know she has another book coming out this year, so I'm very excited for that. But yes, still can't believe this series is over. Definitely one of my favorite reads of the year. And again, as always, highly recommend read a number in the ashes. Okay, so now we're in my top five favorites of the year, and number five goes actually to a nonfiction book that I read this year. Um, I don't read that much nonfiction, but when I do, it's typically on a topic that I'm very interested in or something that just, I don't know, for one reason or another really caught my eye. So every once in a while, I do like to pick up nonfiction, and I'm so glad I read this this year. I listened to the audiobook and then immediately bought the physical book because I knew I needed to have it on my shelves. And that book is Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chen. I think everyone should read this. This book is pretty much exactly what the title describes. Um, it is a book about asexuality. It is um, different interviews with different people who are asexual and their experiences. Angela Chen did an incredible job of finding a variety of people, interviewing a variety of different people on their different experiences and getting such a good mix of perspectives in this book that it felt super well-rounded. The book essentially takes you through what is asexuality and how it applies to different aspects of um, our lives, society, culture, etc. And it is very, very accessible. I think that's one of the most important things and one of the things I liked about it the most. It wasn't one of those books or nonfiction books, you know, about like a specific topic where you sit down to read it and you kind of feel like you're reading a textbook and it feels like it was written for people who already at least know something about this subject or like it was talking down to you in some way. The language that's used in here is not like out of touch. It's very much accessible, like I said, and it's meant for anyone to be able to read, which I deeply appreciate because as someone who studied gender and sexuality, it's not like reading things that are academic is necessarily difficult for me because it was something I did read a lot of. It's just that when it's in a book like this that's like published for a more mass audience, um, I appreciate when the language is less academic and more accessible because I think it'll just reach a much wider audience, which I think was the intention with this one. And also I think sometimes when it comes to talking about sexuality or honestly any topic, um, taking an academic approach sometimes just feels like you're really creating this like distance between yourself and the topic itself. So it feels very impersonal and I I like that this book doesn't do that. The approach that this book takes feels much more conversational in my opinion and I just love that about it. That's nothing to do with the actual like content in the book, that's more of just the approach of the book, but the approach of the book was very important to me, um, especially in nonfiction. So I just really like commend it for that and one of the main reasons I really liked it so much was because of that. But apart from that, the actual content of the book I thought was wonderful. I think it does a really good job of explaining what asexuality is, how it exists 
in our society, how it exists in places we don't think about. It has plenty of personal anecdotes from Angela Chen and like I said earlier, other people who are asexual. And I think that, like I said before, it is something that everyone should read. I think it was very illuminating for me in a lot of ways and um, something that I definitely think I will go back to or reference. Definitely did not expect a random nonfiction book to be on my list of favorites of this year, but honestly this made me want to read some more nonfiction. I've actually kind of been in a nonfiction mood. Weirdly, the only things I've been wanting to read have been like romance, fantasy, and then nonfiction and like nothing in between. <laughs> but yeah, if you've had questions about asexuality, I highly recommend picking this up. I feel like it will be very um, helpful to you. If you know somebody who's ace and you want to try to better understand their experience, again, another great book for you to pick up. Honestly, like I said, just I think a great book for everyone to pick up. Um, it's very short, like it's really not going to take you any time to read it at all, but it is a wonderful read and something that I think that I was sorely missing in my life and also something I think um, is important, very important to the conversation of sexuality in general and the literature that exists about sexuality. Very much enjoyed it. Again, highly, highly recommend. Check out Ace if you haven't already. All right, so coming in at number four on my list of favorites for the year is the one book I don't physically own yet. I really need to buy myself a copy, but that book is The Stationery Shop by Marjan Kamali. I have talked about this book already on my channel, but I'll talk about it again because I loved it. <laughs> the Stationery Shop is a historical romance novel set in the 1950s in Iran, and it takes place during the time of a political uprising. And it follows our two main characters and their relationship, and then it spans over several years into like, 2013 or something, I believe. So it takes place over a very long span of time and it is political and romantic and historical and just so good. <laughs> For me personally, like I mentioned with Darius the Great is Not Okay, one of the things I liked the most about this book was the fact that it is about Iran and like Iranian people and uh, Persian culture and stuff. So there were aspects of it that I really could relate to on a deep cultural personal level. But there were also parts of it that I really couldn't relate to because like I've never even been to Iran. So I don't even know that much about like the politics of the history there. So it was actually really nice for me because I could read the book and I could ask my mom questions about what parts of the history were accurate. And it was just really like overall great reading experience because it was immersive in the sense that I felt like I was very much in the story, but I also felt like I was getting like a little bit of a history lesson from my family as well. So it was kind of like a collaborative reading experience a little bit for me. But apart from that, it was just an incredible story. It was suspenseful, it was romantic, it was heartbreaking, and just overall so much fun to read. It's a beautifully written story and something that I would like to see more of in terms of like historical romance, historical fiction. I don't exactly know what to call it. I think I'd call it more like a historical romance, but also somewhat of a contemporary novel since it does like eventually take place in the 2000s as well in like modern day. Think along the lines of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six. This book kind of gives me a similar vibe, even though it's not about a character that is like some huge celebrity and cultural figure that everybody knew about. The main character is just a random girl, like she's not someone significant in society, but the structure of the story I think is kind of similar to that of like Evelyn Hugo where it spans her entire life. So we get to like see her through different stages of life and learn so much about her that way and I really really love that structure um, and so that made it really fun to read and it really reminds me of that book so if you like Evelyn Hugo which as you all know is like one of my all-time favorite books I feel like you'll definitely like this one too because the way it's crafted is so similar and it's perfect but yes I know I've talked about this book many times but I'm gonna keep recommending it because it is just that good and I want more people to read it so please read The Stationery Shop. All right and number three on my list of favorite books of 2021 has to go to On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vong. I loved this. I know I've talked about it a million times already, um, but I loved this book. <laughs> I still think about it all the time and like that is how I know that I really really liked something. When it's the type of book where I'm just like sitting there and I'm not even thinking about a book, I'm not thinking about anything in particular, and passages from it just like come into my head, that's how I know I really loved something and this book is one of those books for me. This book is essentially written as a letter from a son to his mother who is illiterate so she cannot read, but he writes her this letter about his life and his experience and it is truly the most poetic thing I've ever read because Ocean Vong is a poet and so obviously he's going to have very very lyrical poetic writing and it reads very much like it's poetry despite the fact that it is prose which is also one of my favorite like styles of writing. I like things that are super lyrical, things that feel like they should be poetry but technically aren't. But apart from the writing itself, the book is heartbreaking. It's 
so sad but so good. The main character is Vietnamese American and it's about his experiences with his identity being Vietnamese American and also gay, growing up with that identity and how that affected his relationships and his relationships with his mother and his family and being the child of an immigrant and that part of it definitely spoke to me very deeply and personally and it was just so beautiful to read and very much has just stuck with me. Um, there's one specific passage in here that I think about all the time and I can't remember if I've mentioned this in another video when I mentioned the book but I'm gonna mention it again because I just think this passage is beautiful and it stands out to me and I apologize because I don't have the page number written down but my favorite quote in this entire book is maybe we look into mirrors not merely to seek beauty regardless how elusive but to make sure despite the facts that we are still here and that like hits me every single time it's so good and that gives you a taste of what the writing in this book is like so if you have not read it yet I highly, highly recommend Reading on Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vong. He has a new poetry collection, I believe, coming out this year, and I'm very excited to read that. Um, I still need to read his other poetry collection. Very excited to read that as well. But yes, love this book. Highly recommend. Thank you to everyone who recommended it to me. I'm very glad I picked it up. All right, and finally, we are at my top two favorite books of 2021, Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. <laughs> Last year, I'm pretty sure Chain of Gold was my favorite book of the year, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure that it was. Um, but Chain of Iron this year is my second favorite of the year because there is one more book, which I know many of you have guessed already, that is my favorite. But this one, Oh my god, I loved it. And I hated it, but I loved it. <laughs> I have a full, like, in-depth, like, hour-long reading vlog for this. Um, if you want to go watch it, I'll link it on the screen. But yes, I read this. I lost my mind. Shed many a tear. <laughs> Still haven't fully recovered. I don't know that I will. And I'm so, so desperate for the last book. And when I found out that it was not coming out this March, but coming out this November, I did cry a little. I'm tempted to cry again, getting a little bit teary because I don't want to wait that long. <laughs> it was so good, so much fun to read, so agonizing, <laughs> but nonetheless, still had a great time, still loved the book. Have a very strong feeling that this might end up becoming my favorite Cassandra Clare series. We'll see once the last book comes out, which yes, when that does come out, you will be getting a full reading vlog for the finale. Obviously, I have to. There's no way I wouldn't. <laughs> but yeah, for now, um, this had to be number two on my list. I still think about it all the time. I love this series so much. I can't believe that it's this many years later and I'm still reading Cassandra Clare's books and still loving them. Can't wait for the last one. I literally, I just, I can't wait for the last one. <laughs> And finally, we are on to my number one book of 2021. And all of you have probably guessed this already because I did make an entire video for it, because I had to, because I loved it that much, because this might be my new number one favorite book of all time. I still can't say that with 100% certainty because I don't know if I've ever had a one single number one favorite, but it's it's up there, okay? Like, I love it that much. And that is, of course, The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Did it take me like two years to finally read this book? Yes, but I did. And I loved it with my whole soul. If you want to know how much this book has affected me, as you can see, this bee is on the cover of the book, a main motif of the story, if you've read it and you know. I have bee earrings, which I got, I think, like right when I started reading this unintentionally. It just coincidentally worked out that way. And now I even have a bee necklace that like matches the earrings. Like, I, this has consumed me. I say this every single time, but I do not know how to describe this story other than a story about stories. That is what it is. It is a book about stories and about how stories affect us and what they mean to us and how they can shape people and years and dreams and nightmares. And that's the only way I know how to tell you what this book is about. You just have to read it. It is the most magical thing you will ever experience. I know some people have their qualms about it and it's not for everybody. And I agree, I don't think it's for everybody. I don't think everybody would like this book. I think you have to like a specific type of book. And I think you have to like books about books in order to actually fully enjoy this one because it is confusing. I fully give you that. It's definitely confusing. But if you just like let it take you on its journey, if you suspend disbelief, if you fully immerse yourself into this, I promise you, you will have have such a good time because this book is pure magic, just pure magic in a way I don't think I'd ever experienced before, except for maybe in The Night Circus. But that's probably because it's just Erin Morgenstern's writing and she truly has a way with words. Many of you have asked me if I like this more than I like The Night Circus. 
I can't say for sure. I feel like the Night Circus has such like sentimental value to me at this point and it feels so purely nostalgic that it's really hard for me to say which one I like more because that one means so much to me in a different way and it's been with me for much longer so I have that specific attachment to it. But objectively I feel like there are things about this book that are more mature that I like a lot more. Um, and so, I don't know, it's really hard for me to tell. I love them both pretty much equally. I don't, like, just don't make me pick one, okay? Just, just read Aaron Morgenstern's books. That's what you should do. You should read both of them. I truly don't know what else to say about The Starless Sea. Like, just read it. Just read it. It is so good. It is so, so good. And if you like writing and you like reading and you like stories in general, like, I promise this book will completely blow you away and it's not like what you're expecting. I don't think you can expect anything out of this because it's so unlike anything else. So yes, highly, highly recommend reading The Starless Sea. Such a good book. One of my all-time favorites now. I just, I need more Erin Morgenstern books. I need more. The next time she comes out with a book, I promise I'm not going to take two years to read it. I will read it immediately, okay? I promise. But there you all have it. That is it for my list of favorite books of 2021. I'm so glad that I read so many incredible books this past year. I loved these all so much. I loved a lot of the other books I read this year as well, um, but these were definitely the top, top creme de la creme of the books that I read. And hopefully this next year will bring some more incredible books and even more stories that I'll completely fall in love with. Once again, a huge, huge thank you to all of you for the support on the reading journal. If you have purchased a copy or if you're using one, please tag me in all of your photos, send me your posts. I love seeing them. I mean it. It like makes me so happy. It makes my day every single time I see one. If I'm ever sad and I see someone using the journal, it literally like puts the biggest smile on my face. So yes, please, if you're using the journal, let me know. I'd love to see your reviews for the books that you read. I have so much content coming for you in the upcoming year that I'm so excited to share with you. And I'm just so forever grateful to all of you for your continued support and love always. You all mean the world to me and I'm very excited for what this new year has to bring. But again, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all my links are in the description box as always, as well as links to where you can purchase the Clockwork Reader reading journal and everything else. But again, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!